This is an interview with radio technician first class William Wing Fong. Mr. Fong was born on May 17, 1924. Mr. Fong served from November 30, 1942 to February 4, 1946 in Alaska, San Francisco, Sacramento, Pearl Harbor, Midway Island, and Japan. Mr. Fong achieved the rank of radio technician first class. This interview is being done on December 15th, 2013 in San Francisco, California. This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress as part of the Da Vinci High School's America at War Project. So, Mr. Fong, where were you born? Well, actually, I figured they were eyes of blood, but born in Alvarado, California. I was familiar with it. And a tomato patch. In the old days, there was a farmers work in a field and a woman worked in a field. Apparently, I was born in the, somebody told me that you were born in the tomato patch. So I accepted it as, as, as Fremont now. I think you all know Fremont. And you know there's a difference in my uh, my name, I went through the Navy, complete Navy, as Billy Fong. And uh, I guess in the old time, my old doctors put down whatever they would wish on birth certificate. So um, instead of William Fong, they, 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 they put Billy Fong. So, so were, you were literally born in a, in a field and not in a hospital, is that true? Well, I, I couldn't tell you whether it was, was or wasn't. It was an old timer that worked in the field with, with the family. In the old days, if they go out and farm, uh, farm acres and then come back and, and start all over again, it's so on this kind of co-op type of basis with the owner. So you were working out in the field, I guess. I chose to be born in the field then. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. How many? Well, I have a, had a sister and a, and, a, uh, and a brother, two brothers. Uh, they all, all passed away. Were you the oldest? No, I'm the youngest. Oh. Could you tell us a bit about what you did before you entered the service? Well, before I entered the service, I was in, high, in Mission High School in San Francisco. It was uh, in, the, uh, in the senior year, so I enlisted uh, while I was in the school system. And my, my job there was uh, semi gompers like a trade school, semi gompers I was studying electrical work and repairing radios in those days. So were you 18 at the time? Yeah. You yeah. turned 18? Yeah. Well, I turned 18, 18 and a half or 18, something like that. Did you have other family members that served in the military? Yes, I have a, a brother who was, who was in the, uh, first I was in the Air Force, but then they transferred him into the Signal Corps, so he ended up being a soldier in a single corps, U.S. Army single corps. Why did you choose to enlist in the Navy? Why? Well, for some the reason, I guess. Everybody was signing up and they were working in McKellen Field doing uh, mechanic learner's course there. And uh, they were there as a green hunter to fix headsets and telephones. So, well, the, 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 so they started a school, the Navy started a school like that. So we were sent to McKellen Field to do radio repair and here, set, uh, here, here a head, well, uh, headsets and all the microphones and all that. So one day we worked a graveyard shift with a bunch of mail, at least these were, doing the, the uh, work, and it happened that the, the, the 
men's didn't like it because the favorite ones were the female workers. So we got tired of that. We said, ah, this isn't for us. Let's go and join the Navy. So six of us joined the Navy together. So that's how I got into the, 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 the Navy. Who were those other people that joined me? Well, they, they were the, the, just during the war, the, 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 the government started a GI um, mechanic learners uh, of course, and then enlisted guys to join us and learn a trade at the at the uh, base there. So that's when uh, we got a hold of the idea of enlisting as a whole group of six into the Navy. It's a sort of whim we joined the Navy. How did you feel when you like, decided to enlist? What? How did you feel when you decided to enlist? Were you frightened or like, what was your feeling? When I, when I enlisted? Yeah. I feel like I joined, joining the buddy, a group of six of us. So we, on the spur of the moment, we said, this isn't for us. We really ought to do something better. So six of us joined up at the El Paso. I think it's still there, isn't it, in Sacramento? El Del Paso? El Paso, E-L-P-A-S-O. Is it a street name? No, it's a little town. I don't know. Yeah, in Sacramento, Sacramento J.C. there. So that's how I got into the Navy. But from the Navy, to the, the, this is another story of how I extended into the submarine Navy. So did your family have any thoughts on you joining the Navy? No, I guess not. Old-fashioned as they were uh, in the old days, uh, that last thing you, the, the, the guy would want is to have to go in the Navy, Army, or, or general enlistment. But uh, my dad, uh, old-fashioned as he is, didn't object. So had Pearl Harbor occurred at the time you joined the Navy? At the time it occurred, uh, the war started already, right? Yes. Yes. So the enlistment and drafting was beginning to show up at that time. But my number wasn't called up yet. So did you did you want to join because of Pearl Harbor, or did you have any reactions to Pearl Harbor? Well, of course, everybody didn't like the, 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 the beginning result, but in the end, everybody who was of age were kind of liked to join, which was one of the six that turned out to be me. So what did you do in order to enlist? Did you just go to an office and sign yeah. your name on a line, or what was that like? Well, six of us who went to the, enlist, uh, the enlistment office, officer at the uh, town of El Paso, I guess, and told them we want to sign up and join the Navy. Did you have to take any tests, or...? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, we were kind of half-qualified in electronics. Fixing the radio was the only thing those days. So what was training like before you actually went into war? Well, we said, we said this is us to technical school. Uh, some of the here. And then the Treasure Island was opened as a, as a naval, uh, primary naval uh, electronic class. As a schooling, so I spent some time in Treasure Island, San Francisco, San Francisco there, about six months or something like that. What would it was that like boot camp? Yeah, but we didn't have any boots. <laughs> we, we bypassed that a little bit. Oh, you didn't have to do boot camp. Uh, well, they did it if they if they had time, but uh, uh, we 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 knew that. The uh, fundamental electronics, so that's the main thing they wanted. 
And a little at the time did we know about it, but they had radar coming in, and, and, uh, and we thought that was our, 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 our desire to get into electronics. Can you describe what a typical day was like when you were at um, training? Well, How early would you get up? What would you do? We, we did all the electronic technical uh, learning schooling and, uh, and, and for a physical health way, a little exercise in, in a, out in the field there, doing the exercise and to keep in good health. And then they, they sent us to from Treasure Island to Oklahoma A and M, where we further our electronic uh, knowledge, and then then we came back here and and back to Treasure Island and uh, asked for recruits for different branches of uh, of the Navy. So, so that's the beginning of my Navy career. Tell us what it was like adapting to life in the military. Good. Everything was good. Uh, I, unknowingly, I guess we were training for bigger and better things, and uh, it, it turned out to be radar. It was a secret thing then, uh, which we uh, all went into uh, radar and the side side of work was sonar you know the sound equipment was was thrown in so we had two fields that we went into and the schooling at Gompers helped a little bit the pre electronic courses Did you make a lot of friends when you were training? Oh yeah, you make your friends always uh, uh, in the Navy, especially in the submarines. You are psychologically given a test, uh, psychological test, and all kinds of tests other than uh, fuel electronics, and uh, there's pretty, pretty strenuous questions that they ask. See if you're qualified or not. What type of questions are they asking? Well, I don't know too much about it, but they say, they say, that, well, how how do you feel towards her with their mother, uh, and this and that, and all that psychological test. So uh, they give you a test to see if you were qualified, and it's psychologically, and of course, health, uh, physical health is another thing that they're worried about. But uh, as far as the other basic things were, they were bypassed because of the need for uh, uh, electronic radar trainees. Do you remember the first time you spent uh, spent time on a submarine? Yeah, any, any time. Oh, do you remember most of everything? Can you can you describe to us? None of us have ever been on a submarine. Right. Can you describe what that might be like? Well, it's it's a very confined uh, area. Uh, as it, I don't know if you've seen the inside of a submarine or not. Uh, it's a cramped quarters, and uh, it takes a personnel of about eighty to to a, a submarine to man it, and. Uh, uh, we have a, a lack of bunking space, so we had a uh, hot bunk, a uh, hot sack, and you know, the bunks, uh, if a person is on the, uh, on the uh, watch, or somebody else is sleeping in his bed, and then when, when it's time for the uh, next watch, the guy sleeping on his bed is on the watch, and, and the guy that was on the lookout hit the sack, and he goes around and feels around. If the sack is warm, why that means that the guy is up there for duty, and uh, for you open house to jump in that sack. Uh, that you have about that much space from top to bottom to squeeze into the the bunks there. So we have 
we have about 80, 80 personnel, so we have to kind of move around to find a sack. So it's not bad. We fired some torpedoes and all that. We have empty sacks by putting mattresses over the torpedo racks. So you slept on torpedoes? Yeah, frequently, yes. Do you recall any times that you fired torpedoes from the submarine? Oh, yes. Every... Can you describe that to us? Oh. Uh, oh, man, first thing that you do when you go out on patrol, you, it takes about a week uh, to get to Japan from Midway or uh, from Pearl. And when you get there, why, well, you're submerged uh, when you get near the mainland. And what you do, you submerge at 60 feet of depth of water and raise your periscope and search until you find a smoke trail or, or find a ship uh, sailing in their pathway. Then that's free for all. If uh, you would uh, sink him and he's he's sink you if you're, you're, you're apt to do so. So it's it's a, it's a cat and dog type of a thing there. And uh, we were lucky enough, I was lucky enough to be, be in a conning tower, which is very small, you know, at the top of the, uh, you know the conning tower? No, you don't know what kind. It's a deck where, where the periscope set, sets up, and you see the captain leaning out on, on the top there. That's the conning tower. And that's the main control area that goes down below to the periscope ending and to the uh, the uh, TDC torpedo data control of our operation of tracking the submarine, another submarine destroyer or whatever. So. Yeah, that's uh, one point of, of uh, manning a ship. Then there's a captain, there's a uh, lieutenant commander who's second in command, and there's other uh, enlisted guys. So you man that, and during the battle station, you have that place is either have a crew of five in the conning tower who gets the information to the guy below in the control room, and from there, why well, they operate as a team to search, track, and sink the ship, hopefully. Could you tell if the ships that you were tracking were Japanese warships or whether they were Japanese merchant ships? Was it, were you always able to tell the difference? Oh, you, you can help them to tell the difference. Because were, with the periscope, we pop it up and down you get your bearings uh, and then the vision of whether it's a, a passenger, freighter, or warship. But while out there mostly, well, we're out at the, that closest to, to uh, Japan, be it 30 miles away or, or, or closer. And if you see a ship there, why well, uh, your whole target is the, the sinking, if you're lucky. How many ships did you sink? Did I pick? Well, I was uh, in, in the submarine. There, you are an enlisted submariner, and you are assigned to a ship, and you act as a, a qualifier. In other words, you're supposed to be uh, highly qualified with a dolphin. Well, I don't have the dolphin there, so so the dolphin signifies what you have accomplished during the war patrol. So, so oh, one of my positions is in the conning tower, manning the radar and uh, also the sonar equipment during the battle station. But uh, on, uh, well, on, uh, on the radar, on surface battle, that's my position to man the equipment also. So uh, up there, you've, there's a main brain there because the captain's right beside you and there's also a panel with with the, like a pinball machine with a, with data computer with like fed all kinds of information about tracking the 
of the ship or the direction he's going or disappearing or, or charging at you or whatever. So then the, there's another fellow who steers the submarine. He's in there, the, so he's the third guy. And then the sonar guy could be either me or someone else. So, so the, the, what we do is we track as close as we can to, to a, a, an enemy. Hopefully he doesn't see you or hear you. Uh, and then if, you, if the time's right, why well, you give him a couple shots of the torpedo. So, that's if you're lucky. How many ships did you sink? Did I sink? Well, I didn't sink to all, all of the things by, by myself. Yes. I participated in this. I was in submarine. The, the duty when you go out, you take eighty personnel with you, and then after a patrol, you take uh, come back. You take about a third of your personnel off and put it, give them a new assignment, a new boat. And you replace them with some old, uh, old arrested, arrested uh, uh, personnel to take the empty slots. So, so you are on the ship for probably three patrols, and they go back and they say, "Okay, you're a good boy. We will give you a rest of two weeks," and then you go back to uh, operation again. So I was on four. Well, I was on two, 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 two uh, submarines. One of them uh, had four patrols, three patrols on it, and the other, the last one, was one patrol. So I participated in four, four patrols. We sank about eight. But this submarine that I was on, and all my record shows it, uh, oh, we sank 22 ships. 22? 22. In four patrols? Yeah. Well, and then, uh, yeah, four patrols. Holy smokes. We claim, we, we, claim, we claim the record of sinking the most ships uh, during the war. How, how, much total, how much total time do you think you spent uh, on four patrols? How many days is that? Well, it varies. It takes about a week to go out to patrol and then we can come back. If you go out, if you're lucky, you hit a convoy and you right. go to the Markman ship and you sink to the, well, you come back within the, that particular day or a week. But if, that, if, but if the enemy is hard to find and all that, you might be out there for three weeks, three weeks looking for a ship to come out of harbor or, or on, the, on the shipping track and, and hunt and track and sink them. Well, that's the whole idea. So four patrols could have been maybe around a month? Of total time? No, or, no, no more than that. It takes that? about a, a week to go to the. Oh, just to travel. Travel oh, and, and okay. to travel there, and then come back, either to Midway or Pearl, depends okay. on the requirement for real overhaul and so forth. Was it? Did it make you feel f fearful or scared to be? moving around secretly, trying to be not detected by the enemy? Well, it's not fearful. It's, you're, you're, you're careful, more or less the word. Fearful, I don't know how the, what the feeling is, but when you're, you're getting pounded by depth charges and all that, why, you, have, you don't go jumping around with joy. You do your business and as quiet as you can, as fast as you can, and hope you, you're on track to the right ship and the right uh, maneuvering and all that, and if you hit it, with the, when you sink it with one torpedo or four torpedoes, depends on the, the guys in the conning tower, the captain, this is the whole brain there. So, uh, the, the war record shows you that if you sink 20, 22 ships or some, these uh, have to be confirmed as sank. If they didn't they sink, why, uh, they don't get any credit for it. And if you don't qualify for the tonnage, a big ship, you don't, you don't fight with it, you fight in this sink a PT boat or some smaller boat, but uh, it's over 50 tons or 
of uh, so forth, and you get credit for it. If you're good, if you sink more than one ship or two ship or battleship or something like that, you'll make a hero out of you. Did you have any experience of, of being death charged while you were on the boat? Well, Did that so. happen to your ship? Well, well how about how about getting depth charge for seventy for one hour and have seventy torpedoes? I mean, depth charge thrown at you. Wow! You play high and go seat, right? The, when they're depth charging you, they got sound equipment. In fact, the irony of this story is I look at the maintenance book of our our tech, uh, technical equipment like sonar equipment. Uh, and, and on the first or second page, it says, this submarine is built in Japan, <laughs> which, which is irony. Here it is, we built, built submarines and we sold some to the Japan, Japanese. Oh my goodness. This, uh, this is a f funny thing about it. You know, own, uh, own, uh, guys are using own, uh, your own torpedo to shoot you. And these were all diesel submarines, correct? Yes. How long could a diesel submarine stay underwater? Well, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the, the original torpedo requires few, uh, few, uh, and, uh, and uh, the main thing is every night or every every night you have to surface to charge charge your your so-called batteries and make fresh water. You have to come up, up out of the water and in the surface, and you could do this only at night, at nightfall. And we move out maybe about 30, 30 miles or whatever mileage you require and. And run your boat to charge your batteries, just like a car. You, when you're running your car, you're charging, charging your batteries. You, you are required to do that, and make fresh water from seawater. Well, nowadays, it's atomic sub. They do not have to surface to make the water. They do it electronically. So, Mr. Fong, you um, you have a your heritage is uh, Chinese, is that correct? That's right. Chinese family. Yes. And these students have learned a little bit about the anti-Japanese feelings in America at the time because of Pearl Harbor. Yeah. So, did you ever have any experiences with that? Uh, being of Asian descent, did that? Um, shape your experience in the military? Well, no, not necessarily. Yeah. As as the shape of the war and all that, uh, it's 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 a one against one, and this is the uh, personality doesn't either enter into it as an individual. They treat me each uh, like a soldier, and like <clears throat> like you, you figure you go out there now you sink a ship, and there's a guy floating in the water. And she's shaking your hand at you, and you got a 22 millimeter gun. What would you do? What would you do? Would you shoot? You just sank as a ship. Yeah. Yeah. And he's floating in the in the life raft or whatever it was, and and shaking his hand at you. Well, the tendency at that moment, I guess, is just to fire at the son of a gun and, and knock him out. Yeah. Well, the captain had that have that choice where the gunner was going to shoot him, and the captain stopped him, stopped his gunner from shooting the poor guy that, that's sitting in the water, uh, shaking his hands at you. So, so, but but the, he, he finally convinced the guy to come aboard, because he's out there in the lonely sea by himself, and he's shaking his hand, hand fist at you. What do you do? You shoot him? Or what? Well, we persuade him to to come aboard as a prisoner, which didn't want to come aboard in the beginning, 
and he climbed through those, you know, those, uh, those holes there on the side of the ship there for the water intake to, into the superstructure. You know, so he climbed through one of those holes in, in the, inside the, the superstructure. Well, we, we convinced him to come out because we were going to submerge. Uh, but the irony of the thing is, the funny thing of the war, you hate the guy and you're going to shoot him and all that. By the time we went to Midway, came back to Midway, we had uh, two machine gun guys, a marine with a machine gun pointing at that, this poor guy here, and he's blindfolded. <laughs> but by the time that he, he reached, reached the, the, the Midway, this guy was wearing our clothes, was smoking a cigarette, and we had the free run of the, the ship there. and. Uh, and well, I had a free run. Well, he was really, he had more money than we had when we reached Midway. Uh, well, uh, and you figure, in a war, you kill the guy, you kill the son of a gun, and this and that. But again, it doesn't always work that way. Because by the time when he, he got off as a prisoner of war on Midway, he wanted to go stay with us. Wow. And, and the one, one, one incident I had was down in the control room. There was nobody there except me, moi. And I was there, and there was dim lights. The lights were all dim because of night vision. You want dim lights so that when you go and look out, your eyes are accustomed to, to your, 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 your eyesight. So, so you dim the red light. Here, here it goes through the red light. I'm walking by myself. Guess who was coming through the hallway there, the, the runway or whatever you want to call it? The prisoner. Guess what he had in his hands? Meat cleaver. Um, you know, the chopping ball of meat cleaver. He had it in his hands. And here he was, him and me. What would you do? I, I wouldn't let him get me with a meat cleaver, I'll tell you that much. Uh, well, uh, well, anyway, uh, I don't know what, what, what the hell is back or uh, what, but later on I found out that that, the, that when they questioned the prisoner or something like uh, the first first thing they did when he regained consciousness and when we got him aboard, he looked at me and he said, start talking to me in Japanese. The, so I had to convince him, hey, this is a wrong nationality. Yeah, this, is, this is the Japan, this is the U.S. I'm Chinese, in other words. I, I had uh, a few words in Chinese I knew how to write. So, 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 so the, 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 guy, the, the guy is an enemy, but you, you take, take a little consideration of the human being. Did he shoot the guy or what, you know? So, so I found out that the captain, the captain of one of the flying fish, fresh fish. He says, she it'd be nice to have some fish. So, 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 uh, in, in, the, in the summer, when you're on the surface at night, when you're, when you're going at full speed charging battery, the wakes are fluorescent. I don't, I don't know, know about it. It lights up and it's almost like showing you a way ahead of you. Well, captain sees this and he says, be nice to get those little fish there. So they went to the deck there, and the fish are landing on the deck there. And this is what he was doing. He, he was getting the fish to cook for the old man. That's why he had the cleaver? I don't know. He had to use the cleaver for something. So I always said to myself, holy smoke, the good thing this guy didn't do anything because he's bigger than I am. And because, and because I don't know what any trouble is. the old man, uh, but she must do something about this guy, because uh, I, I never saw that guy until the, until we landed at Midway. My my, my fellow shipmate say, hey Billy, hey Bill, yeah, I said, I said here's a marine guy so with machine guns. They're gonna take the prisoner out back to the shore there. He said you better go hide. <laughs> Send it to me, you know. Mm. So. So that, that's that's one of the things, uh, irony about war. You, you, you hate the guy, you kill him, but after you do, what are you doing? He's dead. Do you think that 
do you have any other similar experiences with Japanese war prisoners? Well, he's the only one I met. <laughs> we were dumb, dumb sailors when we were near Christmas Eve at the Saipan there. We were docked there on the way back to Japan there. Uh, uh, we, we were there, the, the, the bunch of the sailors, a friend of mine, you know, cold, cold, cold sailor, say, hey, it'd be nice to go treasure hunting. You know, the souvenirs, you pick up some souvenirs. So, so about four of us, dumb sailors, don't know any better. So we had the, as the packs of uh, with guns, you know, handguns and all that, and knives and all that, and went ashore there uh, to look for souvenirs. Uh, when we came back, well, we got chewed out. Because cause we were looking for souvenirs and we were looking through those, those, uh, uh, machine gun nests there that has been ab abandoned up in the hilltops there. So we were looking for it. Uh, the Marines says, you dumb, you know, but I forgot what the word was. You, 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 there's, there's still alive Japanese on the island yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so we learned a lesson. They pulled, we went up the hill and picked up a skull. And it was, so the, one of the kids, I, that wasn't me, but, but I got a picture of holding a, a skull, a head. It was going to sneak that aboard the ship so for a souvenir. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the captain found out. And, and, uh, so well, that was the end of that party. Where, what do you imagine the skull came from? From the end. The, the Japanese had a deal with it, they still had live prisoners. They had to have live uh, soldiers that were escaped from the being caught as prisoners, so they were sneaking down to the harbor there, stealing food and whatever they could get from the, the, the gyrenes, the, the marine guys, and, you know. So that's how they survived. Remember the, the story of how a prisoner existed for so many years in Japan and in one of those islands? And they had to convince them that war was over a long time oh, ago. Oh yes. Yeah. So, so, the, so that that's the kind of uh, environment we had. So you never. So your fellow American soldiers treated you the same, even though you had a, even though you were of Chinese descent. They they never. Did you hear any negative names? No, I never, never, never that's did. Good. I think we we all figure about it. We're all in the same boat. <laughs> so, yeah. and then, like I said, they they have a very extensive uh, the test that they put you through psychologically and uh, and see if you're quite ready for it or not. I was lucky. I I, I circumvented a lot of the uh, the necessary type of uh, training because of the need they had for that rating. You got fast-tracked. Yeah, I, I didn't have to go through the 100, 100 feet the water tower uh, to go all the way down and then surface all the way up again with just a month and then, uh, at the uh, training school. I circled and they, they asked you who has that training there at the end of the war. They asked them who uh, hasn't gone through that. I was the only one that raised their hand because I had seen the thing but I never went through the the 50 and 100, 100 feet uh, depth, uh, you know, the water tower that they use to, to practice escape from the, from the submarines. Mm -hmm. So, so, the, so that's that's about all. All I never had, never had any prejudices and all that. Although when 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 they captured the Japanese. Prisoner and all that. That's the time when, when I had my hair, hair to haircut job. I went with my friend to get a haircut, and then while waiting for the barber, my my, my so-called buddy uh, looked at my hair and said, "What you doing?" I said, "I'll get a haircut." He said, "Hey, let, let me try it. I could do it." So he did it, and he did a, such a bad job that the barber shook his head and says. He says, 
Oh, I said, I gotta take it all off. <laughs> so I said, I shaved all my, so as a result, Barbara shaved all, all my hair off and, and then went through the barracks uh, at Midway, the rest of recuperation at the hall there. Uh, everybody that came by that knew me, we could rub my hair. Uh, what hair I didn't have, rub my head. I was went around the whole hall there with with that just a bald-headed prisoner. And not, they didn't call me a prisoner, but they they they, they were that that was the the, the joke was that, that if we here we got a the Japanese guy running around the mess hall. So they're teasing you. Yeah. <laughs> Question? You know? So what did you think of your fellow officers and soldiers? What did I think about it? Good. Well, you have to have faith in your captain and the, and the men that, do, that, uh, that stood guard with you. Because your life depends on them and they depend on you too. There are good ones and there are bad ones. The good, good ones by accident, good ones by knowledge. So. So, did you make any friends? Oh, everyone is your friend, except the prisoner. Well, in fact, this this prisoner was a good friend of ours. What happened to him? I never know. I don't know. Well, they took him a prisoner in Midway. Took him off of the prison. Barracks. He probably have a war story to do it too. So, do you remember any major stressful situations you were put in? Uh, many. Uh -huh. uh, well, when to, in, in the, when you go out to sea, you, before you go out, you have to check your ship, make sure everything is watertight. In other words, if it isn't, you're in pro you got problems. So, so everything is just checking watertight, and uh, if you don't, why uh, uh, accidents do happen, happen or or lack of a, of, of the hard work. One 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 night, I was sleeping in the bunk there, right near the the uh, 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 the uh, escape hatch here. I slept right beside it, then I heard a scream go out. And then the alarm ring up and all that jazz. Everything. What's, what's in the what, when, when, when the emergency? The ring was an alarm, and the alarm, every hatch is opening or that's still opening, is closed right there and then. Because you might be in the right place or in the wrong place. And this is otherwise, it's time to have a column of water pot. Yeah, diameter coming down at you. Why well, you gotta do something? So, so, so that's so my first encounter was was when I I I was in my first run. I was in the radio shack, and then all of a sudden, all the books from the bookshelf just start falling off. We were, we were diving there. We were diving at such an angle because we were going straight down and so up. This, uh, well, we, we we saved that because it went in malfunction equipment. So do the quick reactions. So some other members of the crew to stop the leakage. Yeah. So so what happens? There's a hatch closed. It's just like a cover. It's good if you cover it, and then you can seal tight. But if, uh, then then you can sail. But if you sail and there's a metal lanyard. I guess you know what a lanyard is. You know what a lanyard is? You pull, pull a steel cable to pull a hatch so they close. Well, that malfunction because they let somebody forgot to clear the cable from away from the edge of the the lid, the lid there. So so when we submerge, where all all the water seeped in there and flipped the hatch open and the water start pouring into the submarine uh, like this and the poor guy who was down below there getting supply why he was trying to fight fight that he couldn't fight it 
because the, the water is pouring uh, uh, at this at many gallons at once, right on top of them. Yeah. So that's that's the kind of situation you run into. And somebody forgot to check and find out, find out that there was a cable laying across that hatch there. So did you have to surface? Yes, yes. Hopefully that wasn't uh, well well out to sea while you were well, stalking the Japanese ships. Oh, oh yeah, well luckily it wasn't, it wasn't the time we were stalking it. It was, it was time that, that, uh, that uh, we threw somebody's butt off. It was like, mm. like a, so you take a flashlight and like if that was open, take a flash and that was a cable laying across the hatch there. But you should take a flashlight and shine it across across the edges, see that the edges are closed and you don't have a lantern laying right across it. Uh, so that's the thing you, you gotta watch out for. Then the other thing is uh, malfunction of uh, valves, yeah, and leakage. Yeah, you have. I have dive with uh, or or the Japanese destroyer or whatever are overhead and throwing depth charges at you. And if you don't do it right, there will be too much of a dive angle or something like that. You might be hit this way instead of this way. So so you will be careful. What one time was I uh, had I had uh, years later at, at the uh, well quite a few years later I met a guy and he looked at me and he, at the uh, Pampanito he looked at me and he says you don't know me do you I said no no sir I don't don't think I know you he says damn it he says I went to Conning Tower for you for two, four, three runs, and you don't remember me? So, yo, I said, gee, I'm sorry. I, I, here, so here was the guy with me in the Conning Tower. Water was pouring down on it, and book, books were falling down, down, down that, that, on the floor there. And and he, he was the one who was climbing the, the, the boxes, you know, the equipment things to get out of the water that was pouring down on them. So those things happen. Then you don't have to fight a war to, to find those kind of problems. So you served a total of five years, is that correct? Not quite, I don't think it's five years. 41 to 46? No, 42. 42, four, okay. four. about four years? Yeah, four years. Why did you um, choose to uh, leave the service? Well, everybody was everybody had enough of war, so everybody was just, just going to want to get out of the navy. And, well, the captain wanted me to stay, but I figured I better get some education. So I enlisted in the, in the war the war time. They got they got points in college, and go to school, get a diploma. I don't think you know, but it's, <laughs> it's too young for this. I went into the, uh, the GI Bill, or, uh, GI Bill uh, for for the uh, servicemen. What what did you do with your GI Bill? Uh, I went to Cal. I, I flew it from the university to the university. So I went to Cal uh, part time, and then I went to uh, Cal Poly, and it was another technical school. So I uh, went well, well, the, the technical thing, and then uh, from there I got a job at, at uh, KRO and TV. At what? Yeah, uh, TV station Channel 4. Hmm. Did you use some of your skills from your military training in electronics to. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. This is a, this is just trying to try to get a uh, college degree. So I use a GI Bill, like I guess most of all, every, practically all the guys that are in the service uh, went through and went through a GI Bill there. What was your job at the television station? Uh, a cameraman, doing football, baseball, 
and all that, and do maintenance, and work on a transmitter, and so forth. So how did you feel about the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki when they occurred? But to tell you the truth, when they, when they drop it, uh, we thought nothing of it because we were that far away. Yet, yet uh, I, I still reflect on it back at uh, when we were surfacing uh, on the top of the water there. We felt, uh, I felt a con concussion from the, uh, the air when, oh. when, when we thought nothing of it. We, we didn't even know they dropped a bomb in the boat there. So you were on the surface when uh, that occurred? Yeah, but far away though, not, not right on top of the Hiroshima. Or Do you happen to remember approximately where your boat was at that time? Well, I have uh, never checked. Well, what is in there? We were right outside Tokyo Bay there someplace, but we okay. never went in because the war was still on. And so it took about, after the bombing, I think it was about a week or so afterward. That they ceased fire. Well, we we felt uh, some kind of concussion that sounded like diesel fume or something like that it was on the air, and we couldn't figure it out. We figured it was kind of whatever it is. It was kind of close, but not close enough to to warrant such a a big uh, uh, repercussion from the bomb bomb. So we never had. They never broadcasted in the. In the uh, and the uh, naval or 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 um, naval or land land uh, historian the uh, word uh, the bomb exactly of where we were we but I know it was out near uh, Tokyo Bay there because of the next next maneuver was what we went in Tokyo Bay with the fleet remember uh, news news reels and all that well, we we did because we were out there. Uh, the uh, maximum time of uh, war patrol and all that, so we let the other guys go in and, mm. and secure the uh, Japanese uh, fighting machine. So I don't know, there's, a, there's a nothing heroic about that, but it's just a job done. So have you stayed in touch with any of the people that you were with? Well, that's what that's what the, uh, uh, the, the I have a jacket that says the uh, uh, United States U.S. Submarine uh, Organization. These are veterans from the World War Two. So, in fact, we just had a dinner yesterday. Uh, they had quite a few thousand veterans from World War Two, but they're down to the, the uh, minimum amount, so it passed the minimum, so so we had to disband because we were lack of no members anymore. All the veterans, number, uh, number two veterans are gone. So you started with over 2,000? Oh, the, more than that. In the submarine service in this area? Well, I don't know about this area, but uh, you could find it, but it was for the whole area, for the whole United States, World War II, uh, Submarine, thing. I think about thirty thousand or something like that. But, but out of that, they had fifty-two submarines sank by the enemy or uh, by accident. Uh, we don't know. So, how did it feel like being uh, reunited with some of the other veterans? Oh, well, well, that's a good feeling. You we went through the same thing. Do you have a lot of pride in your service? Is this something that you feel proud of yeah. in your life? Can yeah. Can you talk a little bit about why? So, well, I thought I had to talk about it. But and, well, you have, but yeah. maybe just a little bit more focused on why you're why you're personally proud of it. Well, the comrade, the, the comrade, the, the arms, the, the, and the, the organization was. I think there were quite a few large uh, Roman in there, but they all died now, you know, but this is, I'm about 89. So this is, uh, 
when they have the, the reunion or or whatever national wide and all that it was a larger number but not numbers is as small that the uh, government had to close it down there's there's a national organization to be to be called a national uh, uh, organization have to come up to a certain percentage of personnel uh, on the on this unit so the the lack of members for the World War II submarine uh, manpower, they, they had to close it down. So now they changed their name to something else now because the, the, the government wouldn't allow that, that uh, quota number uh, be overlooked. So are there any life lessons that you learned from your experiences in the war? Experience? Yeah, any life lessons that you learned? Stay alive. It's <laughs> a good one. I don't know. It's, it's, thank goodness, uh, you, you know, uh, you, you're here. We've lost a lot of men. Yeah. We lost 52 subs, either by sinking or whatever, we don't know. Some of them we know were duck charge and uh, so forth. Did you know any of the uh, so the sailors that were on any of those subs that were lost? Yeah. How did you know them? By the roster uh, listed as 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 the so so scamp the 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 second in command of the Tatag, the the guy got promoted to the captain, the, the scamp. So the, 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 I was supposed to, could have been, if I had stayed on, to be assigned to this, the, the SCAMP, new, new assignment. So I chose to, to, to retire from the Navy. So he was the one that brought a brand new ship out and uh, it got sunk. So, you, so the second in the command on the Tautog took over as captain of the SCAMP? And that ship was lost. Yep. And right. that was after you you ended your service. Yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah. So you had sailed as, and he was your second officer. You yeah. sit under him. He was when you were sailing on the Tautog. He was your second officer. Yeah. Right. Uh, we thought we, we, uh, this is a, this is a sailing or uh, feeling that I uh, uh, hope you're not the one that we we have the numbers called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you happen to remember that officer's name, the captain who who was lost on the scan? Uh, that was Hollingsworth. I think it was Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth. Yeah, the scan declared missing, and oh, a few years ago, uh, they said they, they some scuba divers found said they found the remains of the, of the submarine uh, sunk on the bottom. It was way up in northern Japan there. Oh. Uh, they, they, they said they found a leak uh, on the submarine and le left a trail in the water and the, the airplane spotted it. They, they, they were bombed it and, uh, and declared loss because they never reported it back in. Uh, it was bombed by a Japanese plane? Yeah. Well, hopefully it's not ours. <laughs> well, <laughs> it could happen though. It, it did happen to one of a, uh, of, of, of a submarine that, that was caught in a, in, a, in a situation like that, and uh, they they wired up the topside that day. Hey, this is a United States submarine. You, you U.S. Navy bombing this. The, the captain made a wrong decision. I said, "Oh no, disregard that. that uh, we, we 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 don't have anybody that, that uh, around here, which is the U.S." Well, he was wrong. Easy. Yeah. That so, boat was sunk. Yeah, uh, it's still there. It floated near the bottom. So, since the war has ended like such a long time ago, how have you been affected by that? Well, I've joined this organization, the Veterans of World War Two. Just they have a had monthly meetings. Just, just this. Just, just, just to promote the Navy submarines. And what about 
what is it like being part of that organization? What was that? What is it like being part of that organization? Well, I am a part of that organization. I was vice president of the, I think I was some kind of, uh, way in the bottom as one of the, uh, the chairs uh, uh, as a member, not a secretary or anything like that, just a member. Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military? Mm. Oh, I don't know. War is, is a no-no. It's not not known. It's not a glory thing, especially when they can shoot back at you. It's funny after the war, right? Right now, if there's a gathering, a submarine, submariner, or whatever you want to call them, national wide or worldwide, collecting meat together. There's no bitterness. It's funny. There's no bitterness of I hate that I kill the guy or whatever. Just like this Japanese prisoner that we caught, we could have been shot, but uh, uh, we we got we got so close that the the, the ship that was on, uh, that was being hit and being sinking, they they had their deck guns shooting down at the submarine. We were so close. They couldn't de elevate or devel el made it the angle could de be to press down enough to get to the boat. Because that were that close. <laughs> yeah, because of the deck And then there were excellent, I like the, like, well, what happened to this? Uh, when the water came down on the, uh, the hatches and all that, well, it's it's, it's quite quite. Uh, it's 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 an action that that, that, that you do and then it, 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 it's over with and you don't don't remember it until much later. Just like I met this fellow years later, and he says, uh, "You don't remember me?" Do you? I says, "I, I mentioned that." He says, I says, no, he said, damn it, he said, I was with you with three patrol right next to you, this close, and you don't remember me? I said, oh, no. Uh, he said, well, that was, uh, was a time when, when, when the books and the, everything was falling down. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen, because the first thing you know, this room with the alarm rings, that door closes. You're, you're on this side, tough. Uh, that door, that guy was pounding before to get through because he think it's, it's always over there. So it's a, it's a matter of running out of tape. Uh, how do you think your experience in the military was positive? It's positive? Well, I uh, know I, I I don't do it. politics as much as the, the support the organization pro and con. I don't do anything else. I don't I don't get involved in it because because one, one year it might be their enemies and next year you're your friend and the next year you're no. So it's just twice on the coin. It seems like let politician take over, but they don't do a good job at, at all times. So, do you think that you would have been a different person if you hadn't had the chance to serve in the Navy? What, what did you gain from it? How did it shape the person that you are? Well, well, I think the service gave me a job of a field to get into, you know, the radar. From that, we got, I got into the black and white television. And then the, the colored television came in, and I did the football, baseball, golfing, or, or car racing. And that's the beginning of another field of work, uh, electronically, is radar, uh, which is good. But then there's there's other things that's bad. If you 
they discriminately try to kill a guy when he's helpless. So that's another thing, another way of looking at war is war. Should or shouldn't do. It's hard for the little guys to determine that. So, knowing what you know now, would you do it all over again? Yes. Do you do the, make the same choices and? I think so. Sure. Maybe so. Maybe do. Maybe not as eager. Who knows? Maybe not as what? As eager. Oh. Uh, gung ho, you know. Maybe maybe eighteen. Maybe you're too young. But the whole, whole the submarine uh, the thing there, most of us, the uh, average age was about 28 years old. Uh, average, this is not a high average as far as age is uh, concerned. Maybe the captain and a few top officers are older, but the, the main crew is, is, is uh, minimum. that you'd like to add that we didn't cover in this interview? No, I don't think I can think of anything now. Uh, although I think that all those guys are in the submarine, or has been in the submarine, deserves an acknowledgement or credit of what they're, they're doing, and what they have done, what the sacrifices they've made. The 52 sub is quite a few complement when you multiply it by the number of men on each submarine that has been lost due to all causes. It uh, takes a lot of the nerve to, to, to fight against the, the water and uh, in conditions in, uh, that varies uh, from time to time from war to war. Well, it's been a pleasure to speak with you today, Mr. Paul. Well, thank you. We, we uh, I hope enjoyed I did. the experience. I don't know if uh, you gained anything out of it or not. Oh, certainly. We gained a lot from this, from this interview. We really appreciate it. Okay.